Ooh, welcome back. Week 15, waiver wire, playoffs are here. This is the most important video of your entire lives. This is the most important video of the year because if you pick up the wrong person, you've got no room for error. If you fuck up this week, you fuck up the entire year. We've worked 14 weeks tirelessly, endlessly, treacherously for this moment right now. We're going to walk through the trending page on Sleeper. We're going to break down everybody that's high level engagement over there. There's a lot of clickbait over there. You see Easton Shtick? Clickbait. You see Davis Allen? Clickbait. You see Patrick Taylor? Clickbait. It's all nonsense over there. But, but there are, there are some non clickbait type beats on that list. All right. So, as always, we're going to go through the trending up. We're going to go through the trending down. We're going to tell you who we like, who we don't like, how much fab we should spend on him. But if you don't want to hear me yap, you can go straight over to bdge.co, become a member because our waiver wire rankings for this week are live while you're watching this video or at 12 p.m noon eastern time so maybe it's a couple minutes afterwards but you can go sign up for a member so you don't have to go through all this nonsense let's tuck our shirts in first flex the traps hang all right so we look over that trending tab we see something interesting. We see a lot of QBs, and for good reasons. We got a lot of we got a lot of vets showing up, a lot of backups playing like starters, getting starter minutes towards the end of the season. Joe Flacco, Jake Browning, Matt Stafford, highly owned. We're not going to talk about anyone that's over fifty percent owned on this list. Flacco needs to be owned. I will say the one thing that scares me as a streamer coming up this upcoming week: Chicago Bears defense has been scary good over the last month of the season. They've been one of legitimately the best. NFL defenses over the last month. So that is not a gimme game anymore. That is not a game in which you want to play all your fantasy players. I'd still be okay starting Flacco, but I think I like Browning a little bit more. Browning has popped the last couple weeks, gets Minnesota. I like Browning. Stafford is obviously uh, the best option here if he's available in your league because he gets the Washington defense that just donates points to fantasy team. But let's move on to some of the skill players. We have Chase Brown, who's becoming one of the more exciting players uh, as a backup, the only problem is, is like there's no path for him to be anything more than a backup. He is getting a decent amount of touches, and he's making crazy explosive plays. That's the type of player he is. That was the type of player he was coming out of Illinois. That was the type of player he was at the NFL Combine. He tested phenomenally, really fast, good straight line speed, explosive, 215 pounds. So he's a dude that we're probably going to want a lot of next year. Okay, he's going to be like the Tony Pollard of next year. But right now, I, I wouldn't overindulge in him. Just because you could see his snap counts, 15% last week, 30% this week. Yes, they're increasing a little bit, but are you really going to throw him into your flex spot in a playoff matchup? Probably not. Um, he He's a fun player, and they're leaning on him a little bit more, but he's not getting the goal line work. Joe Mixon still gets a decent amount of pass catching work. So I'm weary on Chase Brown. I'm weary. He's still a guy that I'd like to pick up if I could, especially if I'm a Mixon owner. You know, I would drop somewhere in like the 10 to 12% fab range on a dude like him. But just buyer beware, buyer beware for him, buyer beware for Odell Beckham, who's over owned in 50% of leagues, but he has put together a bunch of good games now. You're looking at the last five weeks of the season, and he has gone over double digit PPR points in four of those last five, five for 61 in a touchdown, one for 40 in a touchdown, four for 116, three for 34 coming off the bye. We got four for 97 and a tug. The thing that concerns me, the thing that concerns me is this snap percentage, man. I still don't understand. He's putting up big numbers and they get nice matchups. Jacksonville, San Francisco, Miami for the most part, but just 53%. And that was a high over the last five weeks. Good games, but have come on the back of 53% of snaps, 32%, 33%, 33%, 46%. So it's like if he's not making big, 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 big plays, which I don't know if you could rely on because there are going to be games where Baltimore just relies on their ground game. Ah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Something about him makes me a little bit weary. I'm going to go pick him up, obviously, and he is one of my top players this week on the waiver wire, but he is actually not my wide receiver one. He is not my goat. He is not the guy that I would spend the most fab on at the wide receiver position. I like him and I would start him next week. He's a top 36-ish wide receiver, but my favorite player on the waiver wire this week who may or may not be on this list, how owned is this man? I don't see him anywhere on here, but we're just going to talk about Noah Brown because Noah Brown has now gone forgotten at this point because he put up Zero. Oh, he's on the other side. Very nice. He's one of the most dropped players on this list because he went zero for zero for zero for zero for zero last week against the New York Jets, the toughest pass defense in the NFL. It was rainy. It was muddy. It was 
disgusting out there, and C.J. Stroud got concussed. It was one of the worst games the Texans have played all year, probably the worst game that they've played all year. Here's what I'll say. Nico Collins re-injured his calf, likely going to be out this week, if not multiple weeks. Tank Dell's already out for the year. Schultz is still coming back from a hamstring injury. We don't know if he's playing anytime soon. Noel Brown has had multiple games of over 150 receiving yards. We've seen his ceiling already. Stroud might be back this upcoming week. He might not be, right? He's in the concussion protocol. At this point, I feel like more players come back from it in a week than don't, just based on like the rate over the last month of the season. I don't know why that's like switching up all of a sudden, but they done switched up on us. So if Stroud is back next week and Noah Brown's there, love Noah Brown. If he's not, if he was Davis Mills, I'm probably not starting him, but I still want to own him in the the case that all those dudes are still absent week 16 when C.J. Stroud is back. So Noah Brown is probably my favorite waiver wire pickup this week at the wide receiver position. Now, overall, when we're looking at my top players to pick up, I'm not really on Davis Allen. He had a nice little game, does get the Washington defense. I'm not sure how long Tyler Higby is out for, but if he's out again, I mean, they play Washington, so it's a fantastic matchup. I guess you could stream them. There's a lot of streamers that you could probably pick up this week and feel a little bit more confident in, but, but it's worth mentioning Davis Allen because of the game he had last week. Now, I think the majority of people will have Ty Chandler as their top running back pickup this week because obviously guys like Zeke are not very highly available. Guys like Tajay Spears are not highly available. Now, Alexander Madison likely dealing with a high ankle sprain, likely going to be out for probably the remainder of the fantasy season. They get a great matchup against Cincinnati next week. Detroit's not the same defense they have been. Ty Chandler probably takes over the starting running back duties. Problem I have with Ty Chandler and this is something I've kind of been, you know, hammering home the last few weeks, is that there's a reason he's been a backup. There's a reason he came into the year as a backup. There's a reason he's been a third string at some point. There's a reason they went out and got Cam Akers. Alexander Madison's also been playing, had been playing well over the last month of the season, so I don't think Ty Chandler was even better than Alexander Madison at any point. I want to look at some numbers for Ty Chandler because I feel like I have not been impressed by him at all this year. And among 62 qualified running backs on the season, Mr. Ty Chandler ranks 59th in elusiveness, 52nd in missed tackles forced per rush attempt, 52nd in yards after contact per attempt, and 51st in pass blocking. He's just not covering any of the downs well. He's not being elusive. He's not making guys miss. He's not pass blocking well. Like He's not doing many things well. He is explosive, and he might make some big plays, but I would be really, really surprised if they just give him a full three-down workhorse role. Kenny Nwangu is like, I don't trust him either. He's almost like a bad version of Ty Chandler, to be honest. So I don't know if they're going to force carries and touches into his hand, into his belly, let that man eat. I feel the most comfortable with Ty Chandler in that backfield, of course. And I feel relatively comfortable with the volume that he's going to get. I just don't know how good he is, to be honest with you. And I don't want to like hype him up like to be the next Zach Moss. And then he goes 13 for 45 because he just hasn't been great. So we're going to pick him up. We're going to drop a decent amount of fab on him. And we're probably going to play him against Cincinnati next week, as long as Alexander Madison is officially ruled out, but I'm not going to feel great about it. And neither should you. All right. I yapped that entire time just to tell you that I'm going to start him, but you shouldn't feel great about it. Deontay Foreman's the next guy up on this list. Deontay Foreman somehow came back, hasn't played since week 11, but led the team in snaps. He led the team in carries, out carried the other guys by a significant margin. Roshan Johnson and Khalil Herbert were both like very secondary thoughts to him. Same thing in the passing game. So it feels like Deontay Foreman's the guy. They play Cleveland, but then they get a really nice matchup against Arizona next week. It's a three-way committee right now, so it's hard to trust any of them. It's hard to trust like anyone in the passing game he's, he's risky he's very very risky in your first week of the playoffs uh, I think you could do worse I'd be like okay starting him as a flex play but I'm not going to feel good about it I'd, I'd start Ty Chandler over Deontay Foreman this upcoming week if I had to put both of them bike to bike this could be it, it could flip-flop any any given week for Chicago they ride the hot hand as they said last week it was Roshan the week before that Deontay Foreman comes back it's him could be Khalil Herbert next week you never really know this is an offense though that's improving and I kind of want you know, whether it's Fields or, or DJ Moore or even like Cole Komet, a piece in the playoffs, as weird as that sounds, but they're hot right now. They're hot right now, and I kind of want to ride that wave. Who else do we got? Um, Nick Mullins, if you're in a super flex league, really good matchup against Cincinnati. Dontavian Wicks is, is pretty interesting. If Christian Watson misses another game, he had six targets last night, so he is involved in the offense, and he's in a relatively like productive, athletic, um, good player, and they get a Tampa Bay passing defense that is putrid. They let Desmond Ritter lead the NFL in passing yards this previous week. So kind of like sneaky Dontavian Wicks. Who else is out here? Oh, Zamir White needs to be touched on because Josh Jacobs uh, hyperextended his knee and they play on Thursday night. So there is a very good chance he misses that game. And you'll have Zamir White filling in as probably the workhorse-ish back against the Chargers. But they do have Amir Abdullah and 
and I kind of imagine that they'll split snaps there. I kind of imagine Amir Abdul will get a handful of snaps, if not like most of the long down distance, two and four minute drill type stuff, because Amir White's not a great pass catcher, um, or at least you know he hasn't really shown to be so far at the college le- or from the college level into the NFL level. So Amir Abdullah makes me a little bit nervous. I like Zamir White, but he would probably be more in that like running, assuming Josh Jacobs misses Thursday night's game against the Chargers. Zamir would probably be more in that like RB. 24 to 30 range just like you're kind of hoping for a touchdown because you don't know exactly what his role is going to be outside of early downs who else we got Jaden Reed not available anywhere Dylan's not available anywhere is there anyone that's actually available anywhere Gibson might be available in your league we have to wait for uh, news on Brian Robinson he pulled his hamstring before the bye but then they had the bye so he might be healthy no one else really on this list that's worth picking up or worth talking about Rico Dowdle should be owned going into the playoffs as Tony Pollard's handcuff and a dude who has looked just as good as Pollard if not better up to this point to be honest on the flip side some guys we could drop yeah Josh Dobbs looks like he's about to get benched for Nick Mullins Clyde I would not drop yet I still think if Isaiah Pacheco misses time the game script against New England will be a lot better than it was last week against Buffalo and Clyde already out snapped out targeted out carried Jarek McKinnon Roshan yeah, I'm fine dropping him. Brevin Jordan, I, I would hold on to. Good matchup against Tennessee if you need a streamer. And we don't know if Dalton Schultz is going to be back. We don't know what Nico Collins' status is. So I think you could hold on to him. Josh Kelly, I have no care for him. Noah Brown, definitely keep. Khalil Herbert, you could drop. Taysom Hill, definitely would not drop. Gus Edwards, probably wouldn't drop, but it doesn't look good right now. Christian Kirk, of course. Jonathan Mingo, he was always droppable. He was always droppable. Jalen Guyton, you could drop. Damian Pierce, I don't know. Is Devin Singletary the guy now? They get a tough matchup against Tennessee. Uh, I mean, listen, if you need the spot, I'm fine dropping Damian Pierce because you have no idea what's going to happen here. Parker Washington, I probably wouldn't drop. He makes another like highlight touchdown grab again. I think he's super involved in this offense. So I like Parker Washington. I would not drop Shakir. I would not drop Zach Charbonnet. I would not drop Dontavian Wicks. I would not drop Aaron Jones. Probably wouldn't drop Josh Downs either. Logan Thomas is a decent streamer this week against the Rams defense that lets up a lot of points, so I wouldn't drop him. McKinnon, I think, is playworthy this week as a flex. I wouldn't drop Gabe Davis either. Watson, super droppable. Elijah Moore is kind of on that borderline there. Like, it's always Amari Cooper if Amari Cooper is healthy. And Joe Flacco likes David Njoku apparently uh, a lot now. So Moore is a good fill-in if Amari Cooper is hurt or if someone else on the offense is hurt. But besides that, yeah, I mean, he's 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 fine to be dropped and just some streaming defenses I think the ones that are like relatively widely available the Rams D I think is a sneaky good stream this week they are six and a half point favorites at home versus Washington and Washington obviously allows like 92 sacks a game so they're pretty good Cincinnati plays at home but their defense is just kind of putrid they'll probably be like three four point favorites against Minnesota if they're starting Nick Mullins so you could do worse than that Denver against Detroit not terrible but I don't like them being on the road and it'll probably be a pick em game they usually go for here. Here's the formula for me. Um, the Raiders at home against the Chargers, not bad, especially Max Crosby versus a backup QB. He'll probably come away with like two sacks himself. Go for teams that are at home. Go for teams that are favored to win the game. Okay. We play to win the game. You play to win the game. Your fantasy playoffs are on the line. I'm going to wrap up there. If you want access to the rankings, bdge.co. Become a big dog. Big dog. Become a member. bdge.co bdge.co waiver wire rankings weekly rankings private q and assault every saturday get access to it we'll see you when we see you